is it possible to test at home what the nitrogen pressure is in your displacer before you send it for regassing? Well, if you can connect your pump, this is obviously a pretty sort of standard uh, hydraulic test pump, connect it directly to your displacer with the displacer clamped. This is my clamp, but you could use a vice. You could actually put it in a vice like this to stop the cone um, piston actually moving. So as long as it's clamped like that, and you can apply your fluid pressure in here, um, yes, you can test. So what we're trying to do is we're going to pump this side up, the fluid side, with um, fluid, with the, with the displacer clamped, and as the pressure in fluid gets to a certain point, it will rise very rapidly on the gauge until it overcomes the pressure, the nitrogen pressure, at which point then the pressure, fluid pressure will slow down, the rate of change will slow down. So if you watch, I'll uh, start pumping. So we're going to start pumping this um, displacer up. It's in my clamp, as I say, you could use a vice, and you'll just see that the uh, displacer, the piston here, will slowly rise until it locks out, and then we'll watch the pressure gauge of the fluid. And what you should see is the fluid pressure will rise very rapidly until it hits the gas pressure, and then the gas diaphragm will displace, and the rate of change will slow down. So as we pump it up, there we go. It's hit the stop there. Now if we look at the gauge now, the gauge rapidly rises, rapidly rises, and then stops. But I'm still pumping. I'm still pumping now, and the rate of change is much slower. So that stopped at about 10 bar. So that indicates there's 10 bar of nitrogen pressure in this displacer. Right, same thing again now. This uh, displacer has actually had the nitrogen recharged to 17 bar. So we're going to pump the fluid in. Uh, watch the uh, the cone displacer actually lock out on the stop and then focus on the gauge, the pressure gauge for the fluid. We start pumping it in. Now we, lock, now we look at the gauge, look at the rate of change of the gauge very quick and I'm still pumping, it's locked out there but I'm still pumping. So that locked out just under on this gauge about 18 bar. Pump it again, goes up very slowly. Now, um, obviously this depends on how accurate the gauge is. I know how accurate these my gauges because I calibrate all of my gauges against a very accurate digital gauge. Um, this is 0.25 full scale deflection, so very accurate gauge. So I use that to calibrate all the gauges on my system. But if you do do this method and you've got a gauge from on a on a cheaper um, pump system, it's still pretty good to give you an indication of how much gas you've got left in your displacer. And um, just one word of warning as well. If you haven't got access to a vacuum system to vacuum out the fluid cavity before you start, you can use the fill empty, fill empty system to make sure you've got rid of most of the air in the fluid side. If you don't get rid of most of the air in the fluid side, what will happen is it will take a few pumps to compress the air that's actually left in the fluid side. Um, so the, it, the, you still get a good reading, but it's not quite as accurate. So try and make sure the fluid side is full of fluid and not air.